gotta admit, this is so damn cool, right? It is very cool. And, uh, I am so excited about this that I, I, I can't even stand it. You know, and did you see? I'll show you the phase diagram. Here's the phase diagram. This is the substrate temperature as a function of arsenic overpressure. And what you see are these different kinds of structures. You've got compact islands over here. You've got different kinds of rings that can develop. And you can also develop these holes. And we can predict all of these. This experimental data in our simulations match perfectly. The, the ones that I'm working on right now, I'm, look, I'm working on for solar cells, you know, so alternative energy. And what we're doing is we're trying to take nanostructures, tiny little structures that are on the order of a few tens of nanometers across, embedded in another material. And you know these are going to be absorbing light and converting them into electricity. Well, diffusion is very important because um, as you heat it up, diffusion um, obviously in increases. It becomes faster. So um, as soon as the liquid droplet gets um, hit with antimony, the liquid gallium starts to um, spread out across the surface and that is that is the diffusion of the gallium across the surface and depending on how fast you can crystallize that droplet you can either have all of the gallium diffuse away and l just leave holes or um, only have some of it and leave rings or crystallize all of it and just have a compact island quantum dot. Oh, that's cool. So what you do is if you're trying to grow gallium arsenide you take a hunk of gallium and you take a hunk of arsenic you evaporate them and those atoms come into the gas and they deposit on a substrate. It's really quite straightforward in principle. But in practice, it's a lot more complicated than that because in order to have a good semiconductor, it has to be really, really pure. And in order to be really, really pure, we have to uh, grow them in ultra-high vacuum chambers. And so there's all sorts of pumps. We use liquid nitrogen to help keep the, uh, the pressure low. We also have all sorts of furnaces for all the different elements that we want to grow and the dopants that we want. So even though in practice it's just evaporating stuff onto a substrate, in, in practice it's really much more complex. Uh, I study bismuth surfactant on 3,5 semiconductors. Well, surfactant is sometimes when we want to modify the surface without modifying our growth conditions too much. And it does neat things like smooth the surface and alter the surface properties in ways that we want. Optoelectronic electronic devices like solar cells and um, LEDs and lasers and stuff, we usually want to grow dissimilar semiconductors on top of one another. And we want a nice sharp interface, but a lot of times our conditions don't permit this. And so we have to modify the surface to get a sharper, flatter surface. And a surfactant is one way to do that, to control the diffusion so that it favors growing wide, large steps versus shorter, more mountainous type morphologies. You know, so in order for the gallium and the arsenic to get together, um, there is some diffusion that has to take place. And so you've got, you know, so now I'm going to turn it around, and, and, and gallium is coming down onto the surface. Once it gets on the surface, it can actually wander around the entire surface. And, you know, sometimes the two gallium will bump into each other um, and, and form a nucleus. Actually, one thing that I didn't mention is that gallium comes down as a monomer. So individual atoms come down. Arsenic, on the other hand, comes down as either a dimer or a tetramer, meaning a molecule of two atoms or four atoms. So in order for the reaction to take place, you have to get either two or four gallium together before the arsenic can come down, react with those four gallium, and, and create gallium arsenide. So diffusion is really important in this particular case because you can get different kinds of growth modes. So the first one I was talking about where the four have to get together, that's called um, two-dimensional islanding, okay, or layer by layer growth. The second one that I, I was just describing is called step flow growth because what happens in this case is that the surface has a staircase of atomic steps and the atoms come down, they diffuse and fall down the step. That's called step flow growth. So diffusion is important in growing these quantum dots because obviously when we form the quantum dots, the atoms as they hit the surface, they have to be able to move around and then they need to be able to find the other similar atoms to collect together to, to be able to form these dots. And so it's important that they're able to move around on the surface um, to find one another and then come together to form the dots. But I think the biggest impact I'm going to have is in working with students, really. So the students that I work with are amazing. The graduate students, the undergraduate students, they're all terrific. And I really think that that's the biggest impact I'll have.